What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Day the Devs reaction stream coming at you live at 8 p.m. on uh, Thursday, June 8th. Uh, earlier today, we watched through Summer Game Fest live stream, and uh, we had to postpone this one. This one happened live earlier in the day, uh, but uh, yeah, we, we held off. No spoilers. And uh, yeah, we're going to do Day the Devs and the Devolver Digital stream kind of all in one here. On YouTube, it might be cut out into two separate portions, just a uh, heads up. But if you're watching here live over at twitch.tv slash the Super Gamer Boys, then it's going to be one long stream here. So Adrian, uh, how are you feeling about this? I you, 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 You've seen quite a few Day the Devs. You've been a part of them in person. Um, is there anything in particular you're kind of excited for as far as like indie games? Um, uh, that might be shown today. I'm hoping we get a release date for Mina the Hollower. Been waiting on that one for a while. I can't remember if they have put one out or not. Uh, that's the new Yacht Club Games mm. uh, title. Uh, so I'm hoping to see if we get something for that. I'd love for it to be a shadow drop, but I don't think so. Okay. Um, other than that, man, I'm 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 ready to go. I got my my Steam Deck is over here. It's charged up. I'm yeah. I'm ready just okay. in case. You know, I, I got a wish list of stuff. Or, yeah. Yep. So I'm good to go. Awesome. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have any expectations. I, I love going into the indie showcases just like um, well, I don't do it on purpose, but I, I go in blind because I'm still very new to the indie scene. Like I'm still slowly being kind of brought in Sherpa by uh, Adrian here. So whenever I come in, I'm like, I don't know what to expect. I always come out with like, yeah, a huge wish list. I still have a huge right. wish list of stuff from last year. I there are quite a few I've purchased and played, but boy, I've really ultimately scra barely scratch the surface so um yeah i'm kind of uh stoked to uh see what we get this year and add some more stuff to the list so <laughs> let's do it all right sweet let's uh get going so hopefully i think the stream should hopefully be starting here soon um so yeah we're just piggybacking off the same live stream that we watched earlier today let's see hopefully it's working um yeah, I'm trying to think of any indie games that I want to see an update. Oh, Animal Well, I think is one that I'd love to see. That's uh, more. that's Donkey's game, right? Um, are we getting more maybe? DLC? Ooh, no way. Or is this just an ad for? It might just be an ad. That'd be that'd be crazy if we're getting more DLC. Wait another this like quickly. five years for DLC. Right. <laughs> At that point, just oh, this might be too. the physical edition. Okay. Available now, physical yep. edition. Get yours. Also available, the Cuphead Collector's so Edition. That's pretty sick. Buy it now at imapit.com. That's com. it's worth the money to me. I just I don't have the money. <laughs> the right. Space. Thanks to Jeff Keeley for having us be part of his Summer Games Fest. And thank you to all of you, the millions of people watching out the millions of people. God, that can't be right. This thing has really grown since it started 10 years ago here in San Francisco. Day of the Devs was a idea from Double Fine Productions and their friends at IM8 Bit to put on a show that really celebrated video games and focused on the fans and the developers and brought them together to meet and celebrate games. It started as a live event here in San Francisco where we had developers showing their games where people could play I've them, been there. listen to music and eat food Sick. and drink. And it was really just a festival of amazing Hey, look, there you are. No, just kidding. Uh, very inspiring. <laughs> you never know. It might be over the <laughs> pandemic. It became digital only. That'd be sick. And now we're doing both, a live event and a digital showcase so people from around the world can enjoy all of these amazing games. We had record number of submissions this year. More people wanting to be part of Day of the Devs than any year previously. And we have more world premieres today than ever before. World I'm excited. premiere. I hope you're excited. And please, without further ado, enjoy. Of course the I'm Day excited, Tim. <laughs> Digital showcase. <laughs> that would be effects on that. It's not sound good. I'm pleased to introduce a brand new game from a team that is near and dear to my heart. This is from Greg Lobanov and the team at Wishes Unlimited who made incredible games like Wander Song and Chicory. Here's their okay. new title. Easter. All right. Chicory. That was oh, one. Bangers. I think I I think I added Chicory to my list, but I never got to it. Did you ever get to play it? Yeah. 
but I want to talk more about Wander Song. Everybody already knows Chicory is great. I never hear anybody talking about Wander Song. Underrated. Okay. Fun music based game. Beastie Ball. Well, not like rhythm, but it's a music is the theme. Interesting. See, I like that. I like good rhythm game. Beastie Ball is a turn based RPG where you coach a team of beasties to play Beastie Ball. Beasties? Which is kind of like volleyball. You play as this customizable coach character and you can explore this huge open world recruiting all kinds of beasties to your team. <sighs> Already? Okay. Beastie Ball. Here then we go. And you can challenge rival <laughs> sports teams as you rise your way through the Beastie Ball rankings. Don't mind me, I'm doing something. These are highly social oh, you're good. that evolved to play sports. I'm and gonna be doing this a lot. State, <laughs> ball, to build friendships, to sell disputes, or just to have fun. When VCs play together, they actually become friends with one another. And depending on their personalities and their teamwork style, they can form different kinds of friendships. But whether they become besties or rivals or partners or sweethearts, they'll get some kind of unique combo ability that only that pair of beasties can do, which can turn the tide in a really tough match. Jeez. So with this game, we really wanted to emphasize Let's kill that agency animal. as living creatures. <laughs> They're doing their own thing. Straight up murder them. They'll only join your team after being convinced Dog. by you fulfilling a certain set of conditions while you're playing Beastie against ball, them. There we go. Beastie Ball, add to wish list. as many beasties as you can, <laughs> but to spend time with the ones that you care yeah, about. I should have my Steam app ready on my phone. They grow and change, and the bonds that they form with each other. Looks like it's going to be a while. They're, they're uh, talking about next year on Steam. You know, we wanted to create a really wide variety of beasties. Which is fine. This team does uh, incredible they work. They're two for two. Yeah, so that's true. Take your that's time. True. So we're working with a really wonderful bunch of concept artists and spending a lot of time on each design. All beasties have a range of colors and sizes and their poses and animations are all hand drawn. Did she mention if they're all different or if they evolve like See, this is a good like different ways of moving. Pokemon like. <laughs> Not like that other one. <laughs> this is a good Pokemon like. Unique voices for them. Not Each like one can Pokemon express with guns. a range of emotions, and we've had a lot of fun performing that. <laughs> but it's not all just friendships and rainbows. This game is about sports. You come from a tiny town built around a nature preserve. You're kind of underdogs until one day when the Beastie Ball League shows up and starts tearing down the preserve to build a stadium. Your only way to stop the construction is to rise all the way to the top of the Beastie Ball League. Right from the start of your adventure, you'll be able to see all the ranked teams on your map. You decide where to go, I see there's good boy one development one. going on. And every time you defeat a ranked coach, the other ranked coaches become stronger. So no matter which way you go, you'll have a tough and exciting rise to the top. We're so excited to finally reveal this. It's a really special project for us. And if Beastie Ball looks cool to you too, then please check us out at BeastieBallGame.com. We're going to okay. be revealing a crowdfunding campaign very, very soon, and we'd love to have your support. Thanks very much. We can't wait to way talk ahead to you more chief. about Beastie Ball. I already got your wish listed. Don't even worry about it. That's that's interesting to do a crowdfunding campaign after you like you've developed the game. Breaker, heart machines follow up title. Right. In Usually the you do it before, universe, like to help with development, but they're like, no, right. afterwards. Well, like, it depends. Is, they, they might be for publishing. We'll be the There's a freaking hurricane outside of our window. Look at the bushes <laughs> there. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm in the middle of a typhoon. Of both handcrafted and procedural elements. Just how I like my level. Like its predecessor, it'll be chock full of secrets and lore, sure to satisfy even the I most I think it'd be so sick to work at Double Fine, dude. You'll face off against enigmatic Seems enemies, like just armed so with chill. an arsenal of weapons be awesome. that you've crafted. Well, to the outside, but battles. let some game and development going on, and I'm sure you got people throwing stuff at each other. Oh, yeah, but I mean, just like the, the people there. Like, there's such awesome, like, creative this minds there, I feel like. Oh, breaker. like, it'd just be, like, a blast to, like, make things and create things with those people. This is already wish listed. I don't need to worry about this. So this is a sequel to Hyperlight Drifter. Yeah. Now Hyperlight Drifter was like a top-down isometric. This is like third-person, right? This is different. Yeah. So originally okay. they were gonna do it in the Hyperlight same Drifter style as, as Drifter, but they decided to expand it, as is our which is why it's taken so long because they basically went back to the drawing board. The world that can be okay. brutal, and then beautiful. they made it into what we see now. I see. It's a major landmark for us and the first of its kind. An open world game where you never return to the same world twice. You could say it's a mix of incredible open world games like Breath of the Wild, distilled into the format of a roguelike such as Dead Cells or Hades. You can play alone or with friends cooperatively online. 
Breakthrough Ooh, narrative co-op. will be presented mm-hmm. fully through visual storytelling, where you'll discover and decipher the mystery. Of I don't know if you've ever played Hyper Light Drifter. Lost no. Land for long Absolutely worth it. I think I Every own it. Different, loaded, uh, dangerous creatures. So it's like a free game on Epic Game Store. I feel like I own it on Steam too, like as part of a humble bundle or something. And a mysterious, vibrant, but horribly ominous atmosphere. Each Hyper biome in the world is different. No. Oh yeah, I do. I have it on set pieces, Steam as stories of their own. it. There yeah. will be massive bosses to take need to play that in an open structure with dangerous freaking on it already challenging sub bosses <laughs> scattered throughout runs to pick up new gear that's a problem i buy builds, so many things when they're on sale or like when there's a humble bundle and i forget what i have <laughs> yeah so then later like oh i gotta play the first one i wonder how much it is i go to look it up i'm like what i already own the first one i've never played, i've never even t- installed it before like i bought it and it just like that was it the 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 double dipping between my switch and steam deck is so crazy like how many games i i own on both because i forget yeah we'll have a lot more information on the game as we come closer and closer i need like a spreadsheet that has every game i i own everywhere and that way i can like refer to it like okay wait do i own this game already right yep i do okay i have it on switch or ps5 or whatever halfway around the globe (laughs) to transylvania to bring you a game that is not what you expect. From developer so, Stone so no, Skip so not vampires. and publisher <laughs> I Am 8-Bit Presents, <laughs> Never I'm know. thrilled to bring you a world premiere title that is not only relaxing and enjoyable, it's chill and vibey. Let that anxiety go while you play Simpler Times. Hit me. I have the Steam app open right now on my phone. Resident Evil 7 is on sale for $7.99. It's so, that was a very good game for a very good price. Really? Yeah. I might get that just on GP because it's so low. Welcome. I'm Lara. And I'm Dragos of Stoneskip Studio. We are a small team from Transylvania and our mission is to create meaningful interactive experiences. Our first game, Simpler Times, sheds light to the beauty of the ordinary and serves as a place from Love the that past logo. where you can be present. I like Simpler these types Times of games. Follows Tyna on that would be sick on a shirt. Through her memories as she prepares to leave her childhood home. Oh, oh it's uh it's unpacking. Beautiful. It's un- Starting unpacking. Like never gonna come back. We want you to slow down and say Not that that's a bad thing. We need more games like this. World. It's apple picking season. My favorite. Yeah, it's first person unpacking. Through visual storytelling and mindful interaction. Heck yes. You will Sign me up. Her as she All into right, her here we go. Simpler time. I was doing so good. My wish list was at 30. Father, and here we go now. Hood, and you'll be there to guide her. Simpler From simple activities like that. picking dried leaves from a plant to more complex ones like building a birdhouse. Building a birdhouse. interact with objects that hold sentimental value for Taina. I really wish I could take you with me. There it is. I'm going to miss our duets together. <sighs> you know the world is getting faster. So good. We live Added to we wanted to create you know what game I have not played break, yet that I got from last year me. was a little to the left. You should. I, oh man. I own it. I own it. I just haven't had a chance to to, to play through it. To um, I think an update recently came out for it. Didn't oh, place we're now man. In. Yeah, I. Uh, of the physical spaces we spend time I I did start playing. I've spent so much time here looking out the window. Oh, what's that called? It's hard to believe that I won't see it's this a ghost for one. a while. Oh, how to say goodbye? We how to say to goodbye. That one's very good, both gameplay-wise and story. I haven't finished it yet, but I've, I got pretty far in that one. I think I'm almost done with it. Simpler Times is coming soon on PC and other platforms. So make sure to wishlist on Steam and follow us on social media. Done. Thanks for taking the time. Thank to God I got a Steam Deck, dude. Oh, right. Times as much as we enjoyed creating it. Bye. Bye. Look at all these things I would have missed out on. Ooh, Birth is on sale. That's another indie game from last year. It's on sale for eight bucks. That's the one with the skull stuff, right? Yeah, it's on sale for eight eight seventy nine right now. Let me go ahead and yoink that. You gotta be kidding me. I'm gonna I'm gonna go broke here. Paradise Marsh is on sale for eight ninety nine. <laughs> Frickin' A. This next game is from Sad Owl Studios and Thunderful Publishing. It's a really unique puzzle game built around a camera mechanic where the photos that you take become 3D worlds to explore. This is Viewfinder. 
Ooh. Oh, there's a demo out for this. Hmm. They announced it this morning. If you find it's a difficult game to describe in words, but if you saw it, you'd immediately recognize it. <laughs> what is this place? It is a game that, you know, gives players a lot of freedom. What's an old photograph doing here? Is it a puzzle game? Like The Witness or something? That's what it almost looks like. Take photos or find yeah, photos but it doesn't make you want to tear your hair out like The Witness. Into real 3D spaces. Whoa! Did, did you just shift reality? Sick. That's sick. What makes it unique is the central the mechanic. Photo where became using a real. And pictures to reshape and reconfigure the world around you in order to solve challenges in creative ways. What? It's such a unique experience, and I think everybody is just going to have a different experience of how they play Viewfinder, and that's just a really nice thing to it. Ah, a perfect fit. Ah, an elegant solution. This looks so sick. I lo I'm loving mm. this. That doesn't look Well, there's nice. a demo if you want to try it. What was it? Have they said the name of it yet? Viewfinder. If I was to compare Viewfinder to other games, I'd say it's like the gameplay of Portal combined with the visual illusions of Superlim. Uh, it's on Chain. PlayStation, I believe. People the also compared it okay, to yeah, it's the not showing up on Steam. And uh, Manifold Garden and various other first-person puzzle games. Dude, it looks awesome. It's supposed to come out this game, year, but it's very sandboxy and playful and open-ended. The whole concept of when we started this, that when you actually create something, you do destroy a lot of things. And, you know, that's just a very important lesson in creation. Viewfinder is created by different people. And Look at you know, that. we have people from all over the world oh, you missed it. who have such a diverse and interesting cultures. Uh. What? Each character comes from a different culture. There's a lot of, a lot of sort of culture-specific props and items and themes who you learn about, uh, mostly through environments and environmental storytelling. And so we've tried to sort of make these special spaces that really represent that character, who they are, what they like to do. I'm sure you noticed by now, but using film was always Mirren's idea. One of her many passions. Is that the cat talking? <laughs> Celia was always fond of games. Whoa! It's just no awesome. way <laughs> for us to just put in what we know so that the rest of the world could also, you know, have a glimpse of the experiences that we've had. This must be the next stage. Let's go! Dude, all about it. We received a record number of submissions for this Summer Game Fest edition of Day of the Devs, but this next game didn't actually come through that process. We have eyes everywhere, and the curation team is always looking for games. This next one actually came from Twitter because the creator was posting all these amazing gifts, and we How do I get on that? How do I apply for that team? The, the curation uh, team. So here it is. Hey. I know a banger when I see one. Gorgeous. <laughs> ghost story called Haunty. Haunty. Hello everyone, my name is Leo Dasso and I'm with Moonloop. Together we're making a game called Haunty. And <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, keep talking? Let's look at this art style. Whoa! The main mechanic in Haunty is that as a ghost, you can haunt things and get access to their abilities. Yes. And there's a big variety of things that you can haunt in this game. It's like Ghost Kirby, kind of. Yeah. I think you'll have a lot of fun sort of exploring around and seeing what different things you can haunt this and rules. the abilities that they give you. Core mechanics resemble very much a twin stick shooter. However, unlike twin stick shooters, it focuses less on the high intensity moments and more on finding creative ways to use the twin stick paradigm to create fun solutions to the challenges in the game. 
Haunting follows the story of a ghost in the afterlife, and beyond that it really expands into a lot of ghosts in the afterlife and sort of the stories that they have. This is awesome. I'm loving this. The progression and story of Haunty both center around collecting these stars. And the stars have this special ability that they give Haunty, ghosts access is. to pieces of their past life that they've left behind. The environments and characters are all love the art. with a 2D hand-drawn style. So there's a lot of painstaking frame-by-frame frame animation work in there. And we have a fantastic song. 2024. Take your time. I'll be there. So it all sort of comes together to give you this sort of tour through the afterlife, chilled out experience. That's gorgeous. Look at that. If this is something you're interested in, be sure to wish list it. Yes. It it's, our, I'm, our it's done. Don't yeah. look. Don't worry about the it. Next game is a bit of a blast <laughs> from the past. It arrived on the scene around 12 years ago, quickly became the talk of the town, and won a handful of awards, including the Seamus McNally Grand Prize at GDC's Independent Games Festival. But then, shortly afterwards, both the game and its creator vanished. That game was Cart Life slice-of-life simulation game that put you in the shoes of various street vendors and tasked you with setting up a successful business selling bagels or newspapers. As the story I've unfolds, never heard of this. You soon find I thought they were going to say it's a game called Abandoned by Blue, or or by, uh, <laughs> or Blue Box or whatever it's called. I was going to turn it off. <laughs> it was a you can't we get out of here. And special game that scam of a game. Sad, it's been unplayable now. Remember how, like, Definitely. two years ago, there was but supposed to be a demo on PS5? <laughs> there hasn't been anything about it since. Remember that gameplay? trailer they showed that's just assets that they assets that they bought right okay how does this work uh, this looks creepy hi i'm nick herman i'm with ad hoc studio like there's weird like subliminal things life. like yeah, like Did they recreate it? It's a retail simulator developed mm -hmm. by Richard Hoffmeyer and was originally released in 2013, where it won a bunch of awards at the Independent Games Festival. For a variety of reasons, he ended up pulling it off Steam, but all of us at Ad Hoc are such big fans of Richard's work. Now we're partnering with him to help bring it back. Oh, okay. Crazy. I thought so they were he, just... like, he totally like, delisted and everything. He just shut it down. I was like, now I'm forget it. And they're like, he almost uh, pulled a Phil Fish. And they're like, no, this game's good. We're bringing it back whether you like it or not. <laughs> and he's like, all right. Well, that's just like the guy who created Fez. He did you can Fez play and then. three different characters in any order. Just Each dipped. has their own unique background and hmm. circumstances. What's up, Selkies? Yeah, the boys are reacting. They the devs. He uh, was working on Fez too, and I guess the, the trolls were giving him too much of a hard time. And he was like, well, never mind. I'm done. Cancel Jeez. Fez too, and then dip. It's crazy. Andrus is a Ukrainian immigrant who is trying to put down roots in a new town by opening a newspaper stand. And Vinny has big dreams, but never enough money to make it happen. He's hoping that selling his homemade bagels will help turn things around for him. <laughs> Managing your own cart is not an easy job. <laughs> Just like the? in real life, in cart life, your resources are limited. I know those kind of showers very well. <laughs> you need to take care of yourself and others and how you prioritize the needs of your cart against the personal needs of each character will determine the outcome of their stories. This is giving me like Valhalla vibes. Not mad at it. I was gonna and say- I, I really love Valhalla. Of, uh, the world of cart life is alive uh, and characters passport, who are potential customers. Or papers, please. That you'll get to know as you try to build your- Because of the harder, because of the- There's no right or No, because like the whole like, what you, you're working a job, you gotta make money, and then you gotta decide where the resources, like, okay, what are you gonna Everyone's spend your money on now? Like, oh, it's okay. like, it's like papers, please, but like- What they prioritize and- With obviously, with completely different, instead of like a- A bunch of new story content. A memorization, like, Fact checking kind of thing. It's like a. It's it's a. Really look you know, forward to sharing uh, all with you on PC. A store sim, like you're running a shop, you know. So, slightly different instance that you know uh, your character's in, but 
just the thought of like, all right, like you got to juggle life and work and like, are you going to spend money on make like feeding your family? Are you going to make the business better? The or renaissance has been going on for the last it's going to affect years relationships. And as we get deeper into the grind revival, uh, things Card are getting life a little more avant-garde and daring. This next one gives you all that Tony Hawk mechanical goodness that you crave, but with a heavy helping of demons and brimstone. What? Uh, this is I'm listening? Of Hellscape. Hellscape? World Scape premiere. or skate? Hello, my name is Jordi van den Busse, also known as Quibble Cup. I'm the CEO and founder of Phantom Coast. And today, we'll be talking about Hellscape. Oh, baby, look at this. All right, Anton, first try. Here we go. What? This looks awesome. <laughs> oh, no, that was a good combo. Is there combat okay. in it? What? That's it. Oh, this rules. Again. And it's a roguelike. It takes place in Vert Time. Here you play as Anton Falcon, a skater through and through. All Anton wants to do is skate at Vert Time's fabled beach. Even if that means he has to go through the gods and monsters who will do anything to stop him and his skater friends from doing what they love most. <laughs> The skateboard mechanics are very similar to the arcade-like games such as Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I mean, our lead game designer Steve actually worked on Tony Hawk's Underground. Really? Oh well. A long time ago, the idea and the far off, far flung that makes land sense. of 2002. I worked on a game called Tony Hawk Underground, and at the time we were working on it, we were thinking, man, this really looks a lot like a, an RPG or an action RPG. You have all these stats and you're upgrading and all this kind Come of stuff. Come on, man! Cool, you got the thug neat, director right? on but, it. Of course, we're bound to Tony Hawk. We're bound to the real pro skaters it always seemed to me that that skate graphics create and imply such an interesting world but it's i would kill for a demo of so this right now motivations behind hellscape hellscape Heck is yes. a skateboarding roguelike game it fuses together old school skateboarding with the tricks and traversal manuals <laughs> oh my god this is so cool with, uh, roguelite structure just like with other games in the roguelite genre death is a central mechanic in the game Dead. When you die in a run, so thankfully wild. you don't lose everything. You keep your resources which you can use to get permanent upgrades such as tattoos or skateboards which act as weapons. The combat in our game can be described as a fast-paced skateboard hack and slash. While you have your light and heavy attacks, the core of the gameplay revolves around your skateboarding tricks. The game should be quite easy for people to pick up and play. It has a, a combat system, which is meant to be very friendly, very forgiving and rewarding, especially at the you beginning. And then gradually it teaches you and ramps up the skill of the skateboarding where you need it, when you need it. No. Why maybe did you stop me Maybe from it's skating. not Steam. Look at yourself. Your wings. Oh, your you think arm. it's epic? Do you think oh, man. When that gets to your head? I don't know, we'll see. Thank you for watching this ah, it says Wishlist now no, on Steam. What? It's the not there, though. Oh, it's oh, only 1L. One one L. L. In our next game, Henry Halfhead, you play as Half Ahead. That's <laughs> it. That's the game. But it's so much more than that, too. Because, you see, Henry can be many things. Can be oh, anything. there's early access right now, so he you can play it right now, apparently, if you can reach out to him. To transform into anything he can reach. Using this peculiar power and perplexing form, they say how much it was. The life of the title character, for early access? Yeah, don't you normally pay for that? Zurich based developers, Lululu Entertainment. Oh, not necessarily. It and doesn't in so say. doing, maybe ponder the philosophical questions. Who is. How, how do you apply is, for it, I wonder? What does it mean to be Henry Halfhead? Welcome! May I introduce you to Henry? Henry's not just anyone. If they're anything, they're. Oh man, that, that looked awesome. Henry can transform into everything in their reach. Yes, everything. And that's how they manage. Another shapeshift game. The familiar noise of Henry's alarm clock announces the dawn of a new day. And it will keep ringing until Henry gets up and calms the nervous, quivering machine. He turns into his bed to sleep. That's pretty good. Tick tock, tick tock. At least half awake, Henry is ready for their morning routine. 
which they usually start by making their bed. <laughs> Staying in bed is tempting, but it only leads to regret later. <laughs> That's Anyone pretty good. That if you want to change the world, you have to start off by making your own bed. Completing this simple task in the morning gives Henry a little bit of pride and the feeling of control over their life. With part of the morning routine done, Henry was ready to freshen up. So you have to turn into things to accomplish your goals. Right. For hours, Henry could sit there, lifting the seat up and down, pretending <laughs> it was a singing mouth. <laughs> Not too hot, not too cold. <laughs> Henry bought a turmeric soap. They didn't know, they just liked the color. It's actually great for their skin. I like the creativity of this. Yeah, it's super cool. <laughs> Back got all the dirt. Henry should now dry themselves. All clean and dry, Henry is now ready for a proper <laughs> breakfast. Breakfast with a warm beverage is important, and so is keeping up with the news. This week. That's all for now. Have a wonderful day. This is like wild. I'm trying to wrap my head around it because it's like, yeah, you need to turn into every step to yeah, do it. Yeah, man. <laughs> the candy of nature, delicious. Well fed and well informed, Henry has to get ready and pack for work. This is really cool and all, but also I feel like, like, is this something you'd want to play an entire game of? Right. I think it'd be better as like a like a short experience, like maybe half an hour. If Henry takes the lunchbox yeah, and leaves like now. Half an hour, maybe an hour in an hour. Good handful double of puzzles. Henry, double the fun. Like but when Henry you leave for work, so that should be the end of it. Life in cold mode. Henry, everyday life with a twist. I dig it. Okay. Okay. Our next game is from Yeppy Carlson, a creator who's perhaps best well known for his work as master puzzle creator on Limbo and Inside. We had the honor to Where's JJ? Go get JJ. Solo project <laughs> right. as part of Double Fine Presents. Rhythm action platformer 140 and co-op arcade shooter Thoth, two of the most fiendishly well-designed and fun puzzle games I've ever played that truly give you a sense for and appreciation of Yeppy's contributions to those Play Dead titles. His new game sees him teaming back up with Jakob Schmidt, composer of 140, and applying his trademark puzzle skills to a beautiful, mind-bending adventure game. This is Cocoon. Hello, I'm Jakob, co-founder and audio director of Geometric Interactive in Copenhagen. I would like to show you what our amazing team has been working on for the last Looks like Neil Druckmann. Years, our game, Cocoon. Yeah. Annapurna. Oh, Annapurna. Let me go ahead and wishlist it. Well. <laughs> the lead game designer from Limbo and Inside. There we go. What was that, wires? It was a weird, like, cyborg cocoon. It wasn't like a normal cocoon. <laughs> cocoon is an adventure game with multiple worlds, and each of these worlds are contained within an orb. Let me demonstrate by jumping out of the world which we are currently exploring. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> we are now in a world outside. So this is clearly next gen because uh, you wouldn't be able to load that on a hard drive. Yeah, that's wild. The orange orb here contains the world we were previously exploring. Let's jump out one more time. With that, 
dude. We are now in a world that's even awesome. Outside, and can explore this world using the orange orb that we picked up. What? What? Oh, ha, 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 ha. Orbs can be placed on switches to power devices and solve puzzles. What? This is hurting my brain already in the and best way. you can even throw them into pipes. And never see it again. <laughs> <laughs> So you have to literally discover worlds in order to like use the Progress. world to move on, yeah. You also you probably have to make sure that you know how those worlds, worlds work to solve interesting puzzles. So that when you run into the situation in the For next example, world, you know, oh, it's taking it's going to take this to world to finish avoid it. avoid this moving barrier, you simply jump out of the world. Let it pass by. <laughs> My no goodness. way. And jump back in. This is awesome. Now, Cocoon is not only about Yeah, this is some like uh, This is next Ratchet, level Ratchet and Clank and changing Guardian. dimensions type crap, you know. Right. It was the first glimpse of one of these encounters. forward to exploring the mysterious world I'm loving everything about it other than like the, I am way too stupid for some of those puzzles and I know <laughs> like, like I'm not even going to pretend like I'm going to be able I'm going to be able to play this game because I'm way I'm gonna too I'm going to give it a shot that. I got to give it a shot way too stupid what is it called I wish so cocoon cocoon that looked amazing it looks awesome and now, I'm pleased to bring you a title from French-Canadian developer Impossible. In this relaxing artistic exploration game, you play a painter with a watercolor brush and a whole city to explore. This game is more than appropriate for Day of the Devs Summer Game Fest edition because its title, Ete, in French, translates to the word summer. Hi, my name is Laszlo, and I'm the creative director at Impossible. We are a small Montreal-based indie studio working on our first idol, Ite. How's that going to work with the food company? Is there a food company called Ite? No, Impossible. Oh. Oh, that was the name of their studio, Ite, right? You see the uh -huh. world through the eyes of a painter. With every uh, I mean, they're different industries. Like canvas, just waiting for you to fill it with color. Like, I'm sure, like, Impossible is called like Impossible summer, Food Group or something. Because it's like its full name, where this is probably like Impossible Studios, Canada, you know. Canada, this is this is giving me shoes of a painter who's traveling abroad. A feeling, a real big feeling summer. about a. Uh, this is a game for people who love. Did you ever play the Unfinished One? You're free to roam open city scenes. I did not. At your own pace, following your curiosity. So it kind of had a mechanic like this. Secrets along the way. Except the entire world was white like this, but it didn't stay. The color didn't stay. You kind of threw you paint, with paint, and uh, it would okay. give you the illusion of what you were experience. looking at. It's so like up, the paint would hit the side of a house, and you could kind of surmise, oh, this is what this would must be, what this okay. object must be. Right. You'll also meet plenty of locals, taking part in their lighthearted, everyday anecdotes. And some of them will even commission artworks from you. 
That's so cool. Whoa. Hmm. Using your bike, you can travel quickly back to your apartment and paint those commissions on canvas. Let's see how this works. That's where your creativity comes into play. At your easel, you can create gorgeous watercolor artworks using anything you've discovered in your expedition so far. Whoa. Stamps on your canvas can be freely moved, resized, rotated in 3D, and even recolored. The canvas is pretty much your sandbox Dude. that lets you put your own spin on commissions. And if you're feeling inspired, you can paint as many creative artworks as you like without oh, any time. So you're painting 2D with, with 3D. Of unlockable with 3D objects, yeah. And dozens of commissions to inspire you. The only limit really is your imagination. Oh man. Apart man. from living your best life as the This is something I've spent way too much time. You'll also get just... to meet other like-minded artists. <laughs> on like Mayan, stupidest things. And Theo, a talented musician, among many others. If you manage to befriend them, maybe they'll let you in on their best kept secret. An abandoned building that could become your very own painting studio. But you'll have to I should have Trudy play this yourself. and like review it for Super Gamer Boys. And actually, because she's an artist, like she paints. I was gonna she does, say she does watercolor and acrylic, so it's like I should have her play it and be like, "All right, do you're it. gonna do you're gonna do the review for it." I know you don't play video games, but you're gonna play this Hi, everybody. one. <laughs> How are you liking the show so far? This is the time where we take a brief. Break, I'm dead serious, dude. Have her do it. I think she would dig it. By which we accept games into the nominating committee and all the legal ramifications and the technical rules that go with the accounting of the. Tim, sorry, I I thought that. Yeah, I thought Important. I was doing something here, too. Uh. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> hey, Kelly from Indie Mega Booth here with a very exciting announcement. We're back. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, PAX. If you're a fan of indie I was going to say, this is making me regret not getting Mega PAX tickets. Shows like PAX West and PAX East over the last decade. Bringing together a curated selection I mean, they might be available. of up-and-coming indie Still, titles. you never know. Games like Crypt of the Necrodancer, Let me look. Pax West, Tunic, get yours. Disco Elysium, Badges, Spirit Fairer, Celeste. Yeah, there's still a Friday, Metro, Saturday, Junior, Sunday, and Stanley Monday Parable, is all still available. And, Papers, well, and hopefully, all when we find out part of the indie mega booth um, community. about the Nintendo if you're thing, dev, whether or not I got picked. You'll likely know us from our industry yeah. work, such as our GDC showcases, our presence at Bit Summit, our global outreach and events, Although, uh, including like I said before, I'm only available program. weekdays, so and like I could do a Friday and a Monday, this, which well, kind of sucks Just for think you. Just think of us as like a stepping stone into the games industry. Well, we both pick Friday, so. We're good there games, for the Nintendo, Nintendo the thing. I just mean if we were going to do packs, like, Indie Mega it would just make it a mighty expensive pandemic, trip for you to we stay so a couple extra days and do, like, nothing for two days, basically. Slumber, and we're right. ready to move forward with IMB 2.0. Head on over to our brand new website, IndieMegaBooth.com, and be Indie No by signing up for our new store. <laughs> Learn about new games, upcoming showcases, digital sales, and the best ways to help support the games and developers that you know and love. As we've always said, individually we're tiny, together we're mega. Mega. <laughs> you having a little too much fun we with those. We have world premiere for y'all, and it's also really thematically appropriate for this showcase. Uh, you'll see why in a second. Uh, it's from the aesthetically amazing studio called Land and Sea. Uh, they're famous for the Alto series that you know and love, but this next mm. one is not what you're expecting from them. Uh, it'll be hurting your way it'll be flocking your way alto's no, journey <laughs> it'll be hurting your way next year it's called summerhill those were on apple arcade oh this is the one with the llama mm -hmm. hi there my name is harry nesbitt and i'm the founder and creative director of land and sea i think We're i remember playing yeah, the UK, first one like years ago the when developers the first came out the yeah Alta's adventure series now, over the last few years, we've been I think I played it. The only time I've played it was back in like 2015 on a project yet. Amazon it's an Fire, entirely new IP that like a TV <laughs> thing. My my in laws had one at their house, and they and we're super they excited bought the controller peripheral for their Amazon T Fire thing. So their stick. Take a look, and I'll be back at the end to tell you more. And uh, that that was like the only game they had on there. I was like, how? first of all, why would you pay sixty dollars for the controller for an Amazon Fire? <laughs> and then just buy one game. They didn't game. know any better. They didn't know just any buy better. buy one game. No, they did. That's the thing.
It looks really good. It does. So up until now, all the Alto games have been like, basically like, hey, you just you go down a hill and go as long as you possibly can, right? Like, there's mm -hmm. not necessarily been a s story to it, but this one looks not like, really. yeah, this one looks like they're actually like doing something, right, saying something. Uh, top down, like yeah, third person perspective, top down. Herding simulator. <laughs> yeah. Has what the heck? In another dimension. <laughs> so did you. Ah. Summer Hill. Summer Hill. Folk tale about life, loss, and livestock. Wait, that's the name of the game? Summer Hill? Okay. All right. We hope you enjoyed this first look at our brand new game, Summer Hill. To give you a little bit more detail, Summer Hill is a story driven puzzle game in which you play as a young shepherd and their dog. I like dogs. Together you'll be setting out to rescue your lost flock that have been scattered across the mysterious land that lies at the border of your home. Summerhill brings together gentle problem solving, fluid herding based gameplay, and, and striking pastoral list. landscapes to tell a timeless coming of age folktale. Do you As know how team, to reset your Steam preferences? Because every time I search something it says, cultural oh your preferences have um, excluded there this 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 from the search that haven't been impacted in some small way uh, you know what i'm talking about even the name to... summer hill is so the name often i'm on to i don't know how to do it from your steam deck but like i'm on the like pc right now if you click on mm. your profile ways, there's actually a menu idea, item in in the really profile menu called it says, it says view my profile account details story change account log out and then it says store preferences so i assume it's under store preferences i don't know how to find on the steam deck but on pc and todd is a composer and audio yeah there's like a an actual menu called store preferences and our very own altos when you click on your your profile we picture or like your name so maybe you can do it on the steam deck click on like your profile picture to, please head over to our steam uh, page I'm looking to here. The game or go to summerhill dot game does it say like mature games. content preferences again, frequent violence and gore yes yeah it has okay. has that type of stuff in there as a mature content Next preferences, up, a store content nights. preferences things that you've excluded or ignored and it's a dating action game now you've heard a lot about this Title. Uh, sorry. What? Sorry. I'm sorry, Greg. I know I shouldn't be interrupting Day of the Devs. They I spend urgent. time making an ad? Oh, I gotta listen now. Into, into. I don't know how much longer we can hold out. It won't be easy, and the road will be long. But who knows? Maybe we'll find one more thing worth fighting for. Eternite is a data definitely inspired by persona adrenaline fueled combat and mixes it together with a heartfelt love story <laughs> that's pretty interesting can i be honest for a moment sometimes with all these infected it's too much and it's during these moments that i'm happy to have someone to lean on I don't like the lack of like puzzles, music. Yeah, oh, no, that's no, the no. one thing that's kind of. Now there's everything music else coming looks in. Is great. To make things less scary. It's like it's like just it's the music too subtle. What now? Did you just <laughs> shush me? <laughs> because the teacher might hear us. Oh no, don't do this. I mean, what is this game? <laughs> it's a dating sim. <laughs> That's cool and not. Uh, wow, we are so cheesy. Mini games. We have so many. Wait a second. <laughs> the crisis core squats. <laughs> <and battle. laughs> I'm telling you, this game has a lot of. That, that's Undertale right there. Monsters, explore dungeons. I don't like that there's no music right now. Like, why is it so quiet? Maybe they're working on it. Uh, did I say date twice? Uh, anyway, you have to manage and balance all. I like the premise though. You want to save the world. The clock is ticking. Okay. Cool. Uh, bye. 
Savior Dave. Ha! Ah, that's funny. What was it called? Wishlist now. Eternite. Next up, Eternite. Like, like eternity and night. Evil mm -hmm. licorice comes a nostalgia-fueled gadget-building sim that demystifies electronics engineering and allows you to share your creations. A dating with action game where you try oh, to make the most out of life during I'm the apocalypse. From I dig it. And I'm one of the designers of Honestly. I is, it a is, this game, is this game relevant to you? Similar to games you've played. Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> Forever, I'm in. Like you see what this I is? Love the feeling of oh, you fix electronics. On a screen like <gasps> this one, when I rotate the knob or I press the buttons. Oh uh, no! What I was and gonna say though is that Eternites. I'm actually like I. From. I'm kind of Just interested as well. Now that I've been like <laughs> watching more anime, <laughs> reading more manga, I'm like, we all right, now I'll I'll check this out. I'm a, a lot this game. This welcome, Weasley. Awesome. Your own games in Lua, and we also love. Shenzhen I.O. by Zaktronix because it manages to teach you low-level programming effortlessly. And Retro Gadget tries to take the best of both worlds yeah, this looks and sick. add a layer of hardware building and customization. All so you make your, your hardware and then you make games the for the hardware. Right. You make retro game console, customized retro game consoles and instead. The people have been creating what? insane gadgets that go well beyond our initial expectations. So please join our Discord server. That's so and, awesome. Uh, check them out. <laughs> retro gadgets is in early access on Steam. Again, I'm way too stupid for that, but it looks sick. <laughs> early access available If now. you've ever watched the Mars Curiosity rover on one of its missions, you very well may have become fascinated by one of the hyper-specific contraptions and gadgets it keeps on board to measure soil samples and hunt for traces of water. Our next game poses a very important question, though. Sure, Curiosity can tell us the weather on a planet millions of miles away, but can it deliver a pizza? <laughs> In Mars First Logistics from Shape Shop, you'll be given the task of carrying awkwardly shaped objects from point A to point B by assembling and piloting your very own Mars rovers. And in doing so, perhaps you will solve the pepperoni-based problems that truly matter. So it's Death, str <laughs> it's Hello, Death Stranding on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Delivering pizza. We're a small pizza. team based in Melbourne, Australia. And we're making this game, Mars First Logistics. In Mars First Logistics, you'll be helping to establish a colony on the surface of Mars. You'll do this by what? transporting often awkwardly shaped objects between A and B using vehicles that you design you literally and design yourself. your vehicle to deliver the objects yes yes please well that was not a good way to nope that didn't work <laughs> As you complete deliveries, the game will give you new toys to play with. So you're a delivery Mars rover? Yeah, you're a pizza delivery man on, well, you're just a delivery man on Mars. You have to design Mars rovers in order to deliver weirdly shaped objects like pizzas or rocks or whatever. What? Jet boosters. Who am I delivering pizzas to? Other people who live on Mars. <laughs> what is this? Just delivering this robot, poor guy. Ah! The game is set in a vast open world, and you're free to pick and choose which jobs you'd like to take on. There's a mix of procedurally generated side jobs and handcrafted main contracts. In the main contracts, you'll be helping to construct new buildings in the game's world. It's Death Stranding on Mars! <laughs> Just without the dead things. <laughs> One of the main challenges in the game is figuring out how to pick up each item and deliver it safely to its destination using the parts that you have available. Oh no, he broke it! An 
And as you build up your collection of parts, more creative options will become available to you. And I think a lot of the fun in the game is just messing around and being creative in its editor. <laughs> Finally, I'm really excited to announce that Mars Coast Logistics will be launching into Steam Early Access on the 22nd of June. That's just two weeks away, and we're really looking forward to seeing what everyone builds in the game. Thank you. You'd think all right, the all right. the worldwide flood would be pretty Online co-op? Well, UK and Denmark-based studio D. Gute Fabrik has a different take. From the studio that brought you Mutazione and Sports Friends comes the all-new adventure set in the sprawling post-flood world of Salt Sea. The adventure Mutazione unfolds was differently a good one, right? with every decision, mm -hmm. so there's always something new to see in your next playthrough. That was a Papa Gina so joint. So buckle your swatches right. and get ready for the world premiere of the stylish, seaworthy Salt Sea Chronicles. I'm Hannah Nicklin from Die Gute Fabrik, and we made Salt Sea Chronicles. We're super stoked to show you the world premiere of Salt Sea Chronicles today. Whoa. It's a flooded world, story-driven adventure game where you play as a ship's whole crew. Have you seen this? beginning of the game you're going to discover that Maya your captain has gone missing and together your ragtag crew are going to hoist a ship and set out across the salt sea archipelago in search of clues in each mm. chapter of the game you will decide where to head next who to explore with from the crew when you get there and what to say to the people that you meet along the way so there can be different permutations art style is brought to life by beautiful so. animation and each location is built on the fragments of this world that came before. Our art team have really done an incredible job. I'll say. One of my favorite locations is called Los Gatos, and on that <laughs> island, the people there live symbiotically with this community of cats. As you explore, you'll find a brand new trick-taking card game designed especially for the world of Salty. It's a really good way to sort of take a break from the story. It's called Spoils, and you can play it all over the archipelago, and you might discover how each community has slightly different house rules. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. That's awesome. Another thing we're super proud of is our exploration system. Um, so we're sort of done away with the walk of shame in adventure games. So if you miss a clue, instead of sort of slowly traipsing to the other end of the island, um, you're just going to tap the shoulder button on your controller or select a screen span arrow to move almost instantaneously across a space. It allows us to I appreciate that. Away Thank from you. The path much more there we organically. Go. So I love that. Doesn't tell a story about a hero. It's a story about a community and how you navigate the world together. And each community that you meet in turn is going to be rich and amusing and strange, maybe, and have its own things going on. There's also a strong sense of genre-based storytelling too. So while you might be new to the world of Salt Sea, you'll know that you're in a, a Scooby-Doo chapter or a Romeo and Juliet chapter or a detective one. Different genre. There are plenty oh, of laughs, this is but interesting. tough choices and meaningful moments too. Our writer's room of award-winning storytellers have done an incredible job. We're so delighted to share Salt Sea Chronicles with you all today. That. And I can't wait for you to so explore crazy. the rich world. See, indie games are so cool because, like, you're you're never gonna get AAA games. That's yeah, that. you're not gonna see this from EA, from Sony, from 2K. No freaking way. Because it's not gonna make a billion dollars right, back. This next game. Right. It, sorry, Tim keeps texting. Salt Sea. That was called. Yeah, Salt Sea Chronicles. Oh, Tim wants me to read something. Uh, apologies, but this seems important. Uh, the thing I love most about Day of the Devs as Tim, as me as Tim, I don't know, uh, is getting to know all these amazing game developers. I love hearing them describe their games and their creative process, but I wish I could hear more. I wish I could be a fly on the wall, eavesdropping all their private conversations, all their ups and downs, Supposed to come out this year. and tribulations, while making a real video game over the course of seven years. 
It's too bad there's no way to do it. Or is there? This is actually pretty cool. Uh, Two-player productions was embedded with Double Fine for the course of seven years uh, while they were making Psychonauts 2, and they made a super hyper duper long documentary series, unlike anything you've ever seen in games. Uh, all the intimacy, all the tears, the outrage and joys, and I never got around to watching this. Development that never really gets documented because who has access like this? Uh, so here's a, a very quick sneak peek at their incredibly long series. We highly encourage you to watch this thing. It's it's amazing. I heard about this. So what's next? Second two. To get to the dollar amount we're talking about, it's probably going to take financing from a lot of different avenues. You know how they did like raising Kratos for God of War? Oh yeah. Whenever this is that for Psychonauts start, too. Gonna start taking our oh yeah. Uh, over on uh, Super MPC Radio, they were talking about this, weren't they? Mm -hmm. on, uh, on their Discord, I saw people talking about it. But you know, it's fun. It'll be really re rewarding when it's done. Corey Barlog, you the devil. <laughs> It's such an interesting to submit your look to, to be able to the see devs, or to just hear about day of the, the devs in range general. of emotions go that people go through while they're developing more. games, the arguments yeah. that Thank happen. Thank you to all the incredible sponsors that have been with us since the very beginnings of day of the devs. Uh, like even in raising years, Kratos, just like not pay for any seeing Corey just get sponsors, frustrated uh, and not they, figure out if we're going to be able to finish this game on time. You know, just things like that. Wow. You never really think about how much goes on or that goes into these games. Logos on the screen. We appreciate you and we couldn't do this without you thank you thank you again to the incomparable dose one uh, he's been supplying the beats uh, for all the transitions between all these amazing games uh, ever since we started doing these digital showcases for day of the devs uh, thank you again you're a hero uh, amongst heroes go go check out his music it's amazing Hell, Dose one is incredible Thank you for watching Day of the Devs yet again. If you're it's looking cool. for this was more awesome. information or you just want to I think I wish list at almost every game. Land. I was going to say, <laughs> if not, <laughs> there is like one or two I did. URL on your screen. Follow us on social media. We got more coming up this year. Thank you to our friend Jeff Keeley at the Summer Game Fest. Are they going to do another in person event this We're year? We're so happy to be a part of Summer Game Fest for these last many years. Definitely stick around. We're not completely done yet. I, don't know. Uh, we have I mean, they already did the one, right? Featuring the sounds of New Caledonia. Thanks to our friends who made the game. Yeah, that's true. It's worth it. It's really f***ing cool happening right now. Oh, I think this is what they did last time, too. They just ended with a musical group singing. A real? Oh, it's the people who did the music for this to Chia. Have you heard anything about it? No. Me neither, one way or the other. It's out now, right? Yeah. It came out recently. I just haven't heard anybody talking about it. Dang. Um, cool. Well, let's, uh, do we want to talk about the old showcase here before we move on to... Oh, boy. Where do we start? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, let me turn down the, the old stream here. I guess I can go ahead and pause it until we need it here in a second. All right. Um, so, yeah. Day of the Devs, uh, Summer Game Fest edition. Um, what uh, what are your initial thoughts on this? On uh, yeah, everything that was a. Uh, this is definitely and... for me. This is an A. This is this is a very very good showcase there was yeah. nothing that i did not want to play hmm. in this showcase i don't know if it would be something that i like that i didn't want to play immediately like if i ever had the chance and the time i would get around to it but there was nothing that i was like "Ooh, that looks pretty bad not even close yeah no i think there was <laughs> Everything was either things like I immediately wish listed or looked good, but just weren't my taste. Your bag, you know? yeah. 
Um, yeah, like like BC Ball, I was like, okay, it's not really my thing, but looks cool. Um, Hyperlight Breaker looks cool, but again, like, I haven't played the first one. Like I don't have an attraction to that world or anything yet, so who knows? Maybe it'll change. I own the first one, so maybe I need to play that first, and then, <laughs> then that'll change. Um, but then like pretty much from there on out, I think everything else I uh i wish list um is there anything in particular that you were kind of like most like what's what's your what's your uh, number one like your mvp kind of like of this show like the biggest thing you're either like surprised by or like dude that looks sick that would definitely be a tie between haunty and hellscape both okay. of those were freaking incredible yeah um I, I really like that that for Hellscape they got the director for for Tony Hawk's Underground to come in That's and, and do wild. the wild. That's so yes, cool, <laughs> dude. How did they how did they pull that off? And it's a roguelite too with combat in it. I'm all about that. Um, so good. So Haunty good. is absolutely gorgeous. I love that they you're using a little bit of a mix of the Kirby mechanic um, with how they are interacting with the world. The characters interacting with the world. Yes, uh, I really dig that. Um, I think yeah, those two would be my my um, headliners for the I show. Think, I think for me, uh, viewfinder is one. Yeah, viewfinder uh, looks awesome too. Like just the puzzle solving using photos you find in the world, photos you take in the world. Like, oh man, like that's that's a, such a cool uh, uh, mechanic already. Like, and I feel like there's like there's other games that do similar things, but I don't know. There's just something about this that felt a lot closer to um there was moments that minus the humor but moments that felt like uh super liminal you know where it was yeah. just like like the like mind bending like crazy optical illusions and stuff like that so which i love super liminal i played that on stream uh last year and uh had a blast with that so i'm down give me another experience like that with, uh, <laughs> with a sick polaroid like sounds uh sounds killer uh, apparently it's a the demo you said available now so yeah it's on ps5 so i'll have to download that to fire up the ps5 and get that up and up and run and try that out uh, uh shout out to cocoon yes cocoon that that game honestly look like that's probably like the one game i was that's like, like a five brain game crap that, what right? the heck like that's that's honestly the game like if i was going to pick a game like the game of the show it's that but it's just, I just don't see myself ever playing it because it's like I am way too stupid for this. Granted, well, the problem maybe, with maybe that once is you're in, maybe once you're in the world and get right. used to it, like it makes sense. But just from the trailer showed, I'm like, what is happening? Like this is, like yeah, like you said, like this is like, a 40 chess going on here. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna take you much longer than they anticipated to, uh, to beat it. Just because you're like. I which world do I need for this puzzle? What? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I I I love Day of the Devs last year. I'm loving it, loving it this year. Um, I I'm so happy they do this. Uh, I I want to go to a live one so bad. I know you've gone a f quite a few times now, and one of these yeah. days when it happens, I need to just bite the bullet and spend that forty bucks to fly up to San Francisco or something. Like it's not, it wouldn't be that much to fly up there. Just from san diego and hang out for a day or two yeah, so dude. we should uh, it's, it's absolutely worth it yeah oh man all right uh anything else any other shout outs you want to get i mean there's all killer uh, games but any other game that you're like we have to like mention this one i mean this is the, it, i'm looking forward to it it seems like it's going to be a dark horse that when it comes out it's going to gain a lot of traction mm -hmm. and it's like it's going to create its own cult following uh, I think Eternites. I think that's gonna be big. Yeah, that is a game that, like, at first I'm like, "Come on, what the heck is this?" But I ended up went out. I'm like, "Well, honestly, <laughs> like, I, I, I kind of look it looks interesting. I might check this out." As a as a so. Persona fan, seeing how much it, like clearly it's an inspiration for this game. Yeah, I yeah. dig it, and it differentiates itself enough to not necessarily be called a Persona clone. There's definitely elements. That's like the core of it, but yeah, yeah. I, I I'm oh, digging it. I'm digging it. I want to see where it goes. So good. Um, but realistically, shout out to all these games. They all yes. look great. You can't yeah. really go wrong with any of them. So, if you're out there and you're watching this, 
uh, take a look. Day of the Devs always puts up on, on their website like a list of all the games that they show and links to their their developer websites and all that, so you can get more information. Uh, if anything stuck out to you, wish list it. Indie developers always need support, and they need to know that people are out there and want their stuff. It helps them to keep going, and sometimes to get funding for their projects. So, yes. yeah, definitely do that. Throw on your wish list on Steam, PS5, Switch, wherever the game is, you know, being listed or where you want to pick it up. Like, yeah, Show they see support. those metrics. Show some love, and then they can keep making cool stuff. Yes. Um, cool. All right. Well, that'll be it here for the Day of the Devs live reaction stream. Um, we're live. If you're live on Twitch, we're going to continue on with uh, – uh, uh, I keep I can't remember the freaking name. Devolver, Devolver Showcase. Uh, but uh, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching this. We appreciate you. Uh, and uh, make sure to check out our podcast. It comes out each and every week. Check out the rest of our Summer Game Fest coverage. We've been reacting to all the major streams that have been happening, um, both uh, on Thursday. I think we have one on Saturday and then one on Sunday. Sunday. Uh, so, yeah, check out the schedule around social media at Super Gamer Boys, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And uh, all right, yeah, we'll uh, catch you YouTubers later. Thanks for hanging.